It's not a bad place for a picnic, is it? So that was yummy, and it's good timing that we've just finished because the clouds have just come back over now. We were enjoying a little bit of sun there. Let's go in. We're just going up through the ramp to get in now. We've bought our tickets. So for me it was 15 euros, for Isabella it was 10 euros. There was an additional option to see another aquarium as well, but we went for just the normal one. So I'm in the aquarium. This is about oh, getting on for an hour after we came in. Izzy asked me not to film for a bit so that we could just have some time together, so I did that. So I've started in a bit of a funny place. This isn't where you've come in. This is down below. This part here is all about flat fish. Can you see that one there? Look at his face. Looks like a Picasso drawing, isn't it? With the eyes both on the same side. They're pretty camouflaged, don't they, once they get under the sand like that? Can you spot them? You're not flat. So basically, there is one huge, enormous main tank, and most of the fish are in the one tank, but there are multiple viewing platforms. So when you first come in, you go up a big ramp and you arrive upstairs. Yeah, here's the tank. I don't know if you can take in the magnitude of it. In addition to the one tank, you've got all these individual displays down here, lots of smaller <coughs> tanks, which are kind of topic specific, as it were. So as you can see, this is an amphibian section. Oh look, this is what a frog skeleton looks like. With his legs outstretched, look. There's some tiny little frogs in this display. I'd say they're about mm, an inch and a half to two inches long. Goodness, look at that one. He's a curious looking creature, isn't he? He looks almost completely flat. Here's another one here. It looks like he's all shriveled up and dead, doesn't he? But I'm sure it can't be, or it wouldn't be in the display. To you then. Look at this. Wow. A fossil record of a frog which existed 50 million years ago. Here's yet another viewing platform. There's a really relaxed atmosphere in here. There's loads of people just sitting cross-legged on the floor. Families, groups of friends. And it's a really calm and relaxing place to be actually. It's hard to see where the glass is. I mean, I'll probably walk into it. The surface looks really beautiful from underneath. I see the light coming through. Me and Izzy have been reading quite a lot lately about um, underwater stuff and one of the things that we read was the visual distortion you get through the water because the light travels differently through water than through air so it can make things look a little bit bigger than they really are because of the way the light bends so these are anemones it says in the literature here that they can actually move if they want to because they are like a big sucky foot that's what they're attached by so they're not stuck in the same place all the time. What do you think of these then? These are the sea dragons. I did ask about filming in here at the entrance by the way and they said yes you can film, you can take photographs but not with flashes. That lady knew like, she, it was an accident I think but uh, yeah so if you come don't use a flash. Just looking into the big tank again, cool, look at this one, pointy nose coming. Yet another enormous viewing station. 
on the other side. Hey, I found out what that thing was. It's called a guitar fish. It's very distinctive looking. They belong to the ray family. Somebody's doing a guided tour. Our rocks are getting some small anemones. So those butterfly fish, they those anemones. Those recorded sounds you can hear aren't completely random. Like they sound a bit like electronic sound effects, don't they? But actually they're recordings of um, various marine species that make noise underwater. Sound travels differently through water than it does through air as well. It's a different speed. Oh look, yeah, you can make out that convex glass there. It's like a big column that goes right down from upstairs to downstairs. Makes one of the many viewing stations. If you're not keen on spiders, you probably won't like this. Spider crab. <laughs> there are more in there lurking. Everyone's getting cuteness overload. Up there is a sea otter. I'm not the only one filming the tropical jellyfish. <laughs> a bit like a flying mushroom. It's quite fascinating how they propel themselves through the water, isn't it? Give it to her. No, that's good to see. And hinting on this thing, and the thing on the motion this thing. As he's texted, she's got a headache. She's come to find me. Whee! <laughs> We found a bit of a kiddie zone and in spite of having a headache, Isabel still managed to go down the slide. <laughs> there are lots of little sort of uh, segments here where children can go in and explore. I think it's mostly to do with environmental issues actually. Oh good, I need the toilet. Oh, it's a bit small. Look at these little sea eels there, they're tiny. They remind me of the worms in the Mr. Men books. Oh, that poor eel, he's getting annoyed. Like, oh, boy, get off. <laughs> so we've come back upstairs now. Um, and we're going around the whole thing the wrong way. <laughs> but this is the tropical uh, part here, which represents um, the Indian Ocean climate. It's the most extraordinary looking plants there. Ordinarily, you can get in there and walk along a little boardwalk path all the way along to there. And Izzy used to really love that when she was little, but it's closed off today for some reason. So of course you can look down into the water and see the fish here as well. Moving on. More viewing stations of course to the big tank. Right, which one's this? And she's beckoning us over. Sea otters. I don't really like the fact that they're here. Not in the wild. But here they are anyway. This otter appears to be giving itself a bit of a massage. Isn't that nice? So this is the part that represents the climate of the Pacific Ocean. It's a lot chillier, of course, than the Indian Ocean one, which we were just in, which is more equatorial. And moving on to the next one. It's the Antarctic Ocean section. There's lots of birds flying around here, as you can see, and some penguins. Oh, they've got some awesome puff in action. Can you see that puff in? He's gonna come back, do you reckon? He's probably gonna come. Here we oh, go. Here he comes. But he now he's gonna come over. Okay, 
This one's come right up on the rock here. Right by the people. They haven't seemed too shy. And we're leaving. This is had enough now. Oh, she's getting a girl find it. She's getting a jumper on. It's chillier out here than it was in there. Back waiting in the metro now for the train. We've been to the supermarket. There was a massive queue. It took ages to get served at the end. But Isabel's got the most fantastic colouring book, and we'll show you that later. We're just waiting for the train now. <sighs> See you when we get home. We finally made it back to our Airbnb. I am knackered. But thank you so much for joining us today on our day out to the Oceanarium in Lisbon. Don't forget to give a like if you like the video because it really helps the channel to grow. Comment down your thoughts below and subscribe for more adventures if you'd like to hang out with us again. There'll be a few more Lisbon vlogs after this one. Maybe about another six or more maybe. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Oh. Oh.